if elected president, what is the very first thing you will focus on? I'd like to lay a predicate first. Uh, I am running for president, and I never wanted to be one, actually. But uh, if I get elected, then... Um, <laughs> No, no, no. I was just joking with the lady. Ayoko uh, talaga. I, I do not covet. I've said repeatedly. There was never in any forum that I said I'm running. Uh, sabihin ko na lang ngayon, total, nandito na lang ring lahat. Ayaw ng pamilya ko. Pati yung anak ko nung naging mayor. And she is very vocal about it. And my, I don't know about my first wife. I have not talked to her. Uh, but my second wife, in my second wife, uh, she does not also want me into the loop. The third and fourth, uh, <laughs> may dalawa pa ako. But uh, if, I, I, if I, I want to be president, you should know that I have this vice, uh, vice versa. Uh, pero ito, uh, I keep this uh, sort of mistresses, but uh, hindi ito gastos ng gobyerno. <laughs> I mean, they do not, uh, I, do, they, I do not house them in condominiums, high-rise, or villages. Uh, boarding house lang ito sila. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't able to. Okay, ulit nga. Kalimutan ko eh. Mayor, mukhang nadidistract kayo. Medyo maganda ho yung muna nagtanong. Pero ang question po niya is, what is the first thing that you will do if you are elected? I would suggest to the next president, the first, first thing that I'll do is uh, 25,000 below, no more income tax. Yeah. They can go home with their money. Second, as I will increase the salaries of our soldiers and policemen. Kulang yan, we cannot control corruption. Alam mo, diritwe na lang natin. Mabuti pa. Let me uh, uh, tell you a story. I am not interested. Uh, I, I posted that declaration two years ago in the official website of Davao City Government. Sinabi ko doon, I do not covet the position. I, it does not appeal to me. I have no need for it, and I don't want it. My stand today stays. Pero kung ako ang nandyan, I will not waste my six years to add to the six years of uh, the past presidents. I hate to stay there for six years with an inutile term. Tapos sabihin ko lang after six years, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved countrymen, I did my best. But just the same, like the others, I, uh, my hands are tied. We have to honor the Constitution, this Congress and everybody, things like that. Because in that Constitution, May nakita silang wellspring eh. And that is the appropriation. For as long as the president has to ask money from Congress, specifically from the lower house, wala ka talagang magawa. Every time that you do it, they would say, we will impeach you. What well, I tell you, uh, I will not sit there for an uh, uneventful term. Either I make something new of our country or I resign immediately. Uh, please state your name and your uh, organization. Hi, good afternoon, Mayor. Hi, I'm Peter from Oxford Business Group, and um, I'd like to ask, how do you replicate the model of the vow to a bigger scale? I cannot do it uh, under the present uh, circumstances structure. Wala, masasabit ka talaga. Kaya kung gusto ko, sabihin ko na sa inyo, let us all reform, including me. If I were to do it, I'll just say that we will study six months to one year. If I could not get even the slightest reform, hiritang ko talaga kayo. I'll declare a revolutionary government. If, if Corey did it, why can't I? Then I can start with the cleansing. It has to start with the, me, the military, and the police. And uh, I will use the money to increase the salaries of all teachers in the building. Nanay ko kasi maestra. Walang maestra na yun na ng public school teacher na 18,000. 
They are eternally tied to the five six. Of course, the military. Sabi ko sa kanila, nila lalo ni mga police. Ah, sige. I'll increase your salaries. Kano mo hindi hindi barilin kita. Ombra ka prangka na lang tayo. Ong natay mo pakornehan dito. Ang driver ko na police. Tatlong anak niyang babae. Every enrollment time, maghiram siya. So sabihin ko siya, what is your take-home pay? Sabi niya, sir, 1,500 na lang. Oh, ako, gamitan mo lang ng 1 plus 1. Alam mo talaga na magkukurap yan. No, you have to increase the salaries. I'll give you 50,000 pa 70,000. Marami akong pera eh. Alam mo bakit? Sarado yung Congress. But I will not dismiss the employees. <laughs> Ito mga kaparin sila. Mayor, we have one more question. One more question. Yes, state your name. Yes, Ms. Marisa Dalmar, Buhay OFWTV. And of course, Director of BACC, Volunteers Against Crime and Corruption. Mayor, what is your take dito po sa BBL, sa Bangsamoro? Kaming taga Mindanao, we are for it. Because it might really spell the difference between existing and dying. I mean war. Murad at one time said that uh, if there is no BBL for him, he'd go to war. Two months after the president himself, in reaction to a question, you know, sabi niya, if you do not give to Murad the BBL law, you might as well start to count body bugs. Then uh, two weeks after, Deles Siging came out with the statement, 14 issues ago sa Inquirer, there will be a bloody confrontation if there is no BBL. I think there will be a bloody confrontation. And that is why, uh, if you allow me, I'll explain why I was going around uh, 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 advancing federalism. Pag wala kasing BBL, which, uh, if there is one, it would be watered down heavily. So that would not be acceptable to them. So there would still be trouble. Itong federalism was uh, a brainchild of uh, Kanoy, Senator Pimentel, the father, and Lito Smiña, the governor of Cebu. Sila yung mga early exponents niyan. Pumunta sila sa akin, sabi nila, Rod, ikaw may yung pinakabata dito sa atin. Sabi niya, pag 50 ka lang siguro eh. Sabi ko, yes, sir. 50 years old. Sabi niya, you carry the torts of federalism. Alam mo kung bakit ko tinanggap yan. Before Congress actually studied on it, when it was submitted to them, sa mga members, nabasa ko na yung draft at nakita ko na yung problema way, way ahead. Given the bigotry of some people, the utter bias against our Muslim brothers. And of course, the intricacies plus the constitutional provisions there, I said, this will have, have a hard time to pass to Congress. Kaya kinuha ko na kaagad yung baraha. So I was going around every city. I could not go to Congress because sila ang matatamaan ng federalism. You just have to do away with the unitary type. You go federal, they will lose their jobs. Power and money. So I went around cities promoting federalism sa local officials. Yun ang ano ko. At may nakita itong iba dito, ayan, sa harap ko, yung iba nandun. Uh, sinakyan na lang na for president. Sinabi ko, ayan, ayaw ko. Ayaw ko. So, Mayor, marami pa po. There's one over here. I'm Cynthia Carion from the Philippine Olympic Committee and former Undersecretary for the Department of Tourism and Philippine Sports Commission. And I just wanted to know that all of us here, all I know, I clamoring you for you to be the president to announce. But I would like to have the job of convincing your wives to please allow you to be president. And all the wives that you said, most Filipinos have that. So don't worry about the one vice that you have. So we want you to be president, please, sir. Alam mo na, sa totoo lang, if I may, just, you would allow me, hindi ko na talaga panahon. And I would just cite the Bible, Ecclesiastes 3. There is a time for everything. To be great and to be small. Time for plenty and a time for one. A time for sorrow and a time for joy. 
live time to die. Ako, yung opportunity to be president is uh, a window that's very, very small. Sabihin ko na lang sa inyo, hindi ko na talaga ang panahon. It's no longer my time. Give it to somebody else na yung may gusto. May mahirap yung nandiyan ka na ayaw mo. Uh, Magtamad-tamaran ka. May, when I was mayor early, in, early on, I worked until midnight, just going around the city, killing mosquitoes that were bothering the <laughs> and rats all over. Yes, sir. I'm Sebastian Castro. I am not here for representing a company. I'm just representing myself. A lot of economists believe that one of the most efficient ways to tackle poverty, to really have more structural change, is land reform. When it comes down to it, uh, the agriculture sector still is the biggest sector of our economy. Mm. At least it employs the most people, right? You have tens of millions of people or poor farmers who do not own the land they work on. And that's been the way it has been for so long, which is just a mirror of the overall picture that we still live in a country where the hands, power and money and wealth is still in the hands of a very select few. So my main question is, will you do anything about uh, land reform, meaningful land reform? I will uh, try to figure out if it's still needed an extension. It has expired, the law on land reform. If ever I would reinstate it, they would not go for a, a, a thing just like uh, giving them to hectares. Because most of the lands given to the beneficiaries, would you believe it? About 85% of those given to the farmers, tenants, are back in the hands of the landlords. The land reform is really a faulty one. Unless you supply the farm implements, give them the, the fertilizers, the seedlings, and even assure them of the market because a competition of uh, importation would really kill them even at great prices na lang, even at that uh, just just uh, figure out how much you can buy from them uh, to be sure that the produce are uh, sold you know uh, be the coming of a uh, the Asian economic, I, I don't know how much tariff, no, it's a very, very low three. Maybe the time will come, it will be zero. It's a free trade actually for all. But uh, that kind of a system is only good for the highly industrialized countries. Now remember that the Philippines is an agricultural country. Economy not in based on agriculture. We'll have to do some protective measures, not even safety nets. You'll have to just say to them, you know, guys, You'd kill my countrymen, and I can only accept so much. If you want to import, that tapos mas mura mura. Patay yung Pilipino. We can talk of something else about the China problem, but then again, ah, this is not really to you know the Americans uh, with due respect. Uh, that that problem in the south. Let me ramble on because very important for you. Uh, ano yung China si? We cannot fight the Chinese. America will not die for us. I am very sure of that. As a matter of fact, they're already talking somewhere about uh, closer ties. But the posturings in the South uh, Ch China Sea is something which has irritated the China. Eh, kasi yung mga maneuver military. And they would ask, to whom are you directing your maneuvers? To Vietnam? Which is just in front of us in the West. It, 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 obviously, it's against the Americans, but the Americans are, they have a broken spirit right now. The class hatred, the color, has emerged again, rear its ugly head. And this is something which cannot be done publicly doon sa kanila. But we know that the problems of uh, America are multiple, two of them prominently is uh, there's a class, uh, a, a race uh, hatred now. It's growing. The Confederates of the South are really adamant about their uh, the freedom of what? To talk, to fly the flag. And America is deathly afraid of terrorism. The last thing that really would do is to go into a quarrel. And even in the Europe, it's losing its grip about the Ukraine. Nothing except criticism. Now Greece is being paneled by EU. 
withholding aid and Merkel of Germany seems to be standing hard. And the problem ganito, with the coming of Russia who offered to give them gas, fuel, and the 10 trillion of the Chinese, and he would just say, I'll buy your debt. Then you can grow and I'll give you the space of maybe 10 years to pay us. There's a growing hegemony in Europe and in Africa in favor of the Chinese and Russians. That's how it is. That's how I see it. Itong Greece na to, pag talagang sipa-sipa nila, pupunta yan China. And China would say, good. Uh, uh, how much? 32 billion? I'll pay it. I'll give you 10, 15 years to, to repay. So that is how dangerous the, the world is today. Uh, Russia is bristling with uh, weapons. And they have, a, I feel that they have reached the parity in arms. Kaya takot ng Amerika eh. Alam mo kasi, if the Americans really wanted the influence in South Asia, they could have destroyed right at the beginning the airport and the islands you know, that are being built around. Noon pa siya na inupapan, takot talaga ang Amerika. But that's to assure the Filipino spirit and the rest of the Asian, they go into the maneuvering business. Good afternoon, Mayor. My name is Patrick. I'm a student from De La Salle University and I'm also interning at the U.S. ASEAN Business Council. I'm tired of the atrophy in our government. And my question is, how will you inspire public servants on a national level to bring the best kind of service or top quality service to our Filipino people and bring back trust in our government? You know, earlier on, sa pagka mayor ko, in my inaugural speech, the first sentence is, I hold it an article of faith that no progress and development in this city will come if we have do not law and order. Sabi ko, we have to have peace to enable the money from the pockets of the investors to come in. Pag wala talang patayan tayo, you kidnap the bank manager, sabi ko, patay. Okay, the best antidote kasi dyan is really to create an environment where the human being with so much talent can function. There has to be law and order to inspire people to even to join politics. Marami kasi ang Pilipino talented, but uh, they disdain uh, public service because of corruption. There's another one here. Yes, sir, please. Uh, Pepe Galvez, private citizen. Mayor, I believe you have a sincere and caring heart because otherwise you would not have been able to do the kind of change and improvement you did in Davao. In fact, I believe that your sincere and caring heart goes beyond uh, the love, wishes, and the whims of your spouse and your other women or whatever. <laughs> so what is it really that would trigger you to run and be willing to serve our country and our people. You mentioned about my... <laughs> mentioned about my women. Ikaw, ilang iyo? <laughs> so, kung isa lang, kawawa ka naman. Ay, kawawa ka kung gano. Uh, I pity you. I cannot survive with one. <laughs> Pag inaway mo yan, itabla ka na yung araw na yan. <laughs> Alam mo talaga, uh, ako ay... ay, ay it, 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 it took cavalier fashion ago because they are interested in it. That's why I can really mouth whatever I want to say. You know, kagaya noon sa... If you have the goods on me, file the case. But I have a job to do and I will do it, whatever it is. Yes, sir. Uh, please take your... Good afternoon. I am Jay Season from San Beta before your time. Yes, sir. This is a problem that I know you are concerned because up to now, your city has not received its rightful share of the IRA, which is provided under the Constitution to be given to local governments automatically. Now, will it take you to be president to be able to give all the local governments uh, autonomy in the sense that they receive their 40% share of all internal revenue taxes 
collected by government. That's the reason why we should go to federalism. Because the unit, unitary type of government was created by the Spaniards in 1521 for 400 years when the Americans came because we were given that uh, uh, this country was just like a chattel. We were passed on to the Americans. They maintained the uh, unitary type until today. You know, if you look down to Australia, it's parliament federal. If you go still down to the south, there's New Zealand, it's federal parliament. You go up to Singapore, it's federal parliament. You look at Malaysia, it's federal uh, uh, parliament. You go to Japan, it's diet, it's a parliament. And you go to uh, South, North, uh, South, South Korea, bigger parliament. Uh, I said uh, if a shift to federal would really greatly improve things. Because then you do not need to wait for us uh, to receive. In federal, you retain the proceeds of your uh, so, uh, resources. Then you contribute to the national federal government. Ito ang Pilipinas eh. Uh, let's limit ito. Uh, president, mayor, uh, no, the powers are. It's, uh, it's not inclusive. The residual powers not found in that document, uh, autonomy law, goes back to the DILG. In a federal system, the president, uh, uh, the prime minister, yan, yan, yan. kung wala dyan, bababa yan doon sa automatically devolved down to the uh, local governments. Yan ang maganda. It's about time. We're the only ones who are hanging on to. It's really for control. That's the reason why you want to build a railway and everything. You have to go to NEDA. And NEDA, sino pong taga NEDA dito? Dukduk yung ulo nyo. Tagal nyo mag-process. You sit on the paper. You know, in Davao, you have 72 hours. Baski anong klase ng opisina? You want a clearance? You want a certificate or what? 72 hours. After 72 hours, you cannot release the papers anymore. You have to forward it to me. Why? With the explanation, why it took you more than 72 hours, four days, to process the paper. Thank you, Ari. That's the reason why we need an enforcer president, which translates to Mr. Duterte. Thank you. Okay. Hindi kasi ninyo alam. He's my relative. That's why he talks that way. Uh, always there is. Okay, uh, we have one there, sir. Hi, Mayor. I'm Francis Romero from Jonestown, the South Philippines. My question is, sir, aside from the nationwide government privileges and benefits granted to developers and investors like the BOI, the PESA, have Davao City, during your leadership, implemented special benefits or laws or ordinances that is aimed to further attract developers to develop in Davao or investors to invest in the city? Ang isang problema lang is the NPA. If you are into uh, an agricultural venture, agricultural uh, farming, you have to deal sometimes with the NPAs. And that is a reality which we cannot really uh, deny everywhere. But uh, the NPAs are very, uh, very strong, or maybe the strongest is Region 11. What I do there is I talk to them. I am a son of a poor man. Though my father became governor, uh, 1957-67, kinakausap ko lang uh, yung taxation nila. Hindi mo madala sa takot eh. Hindi talaga kaya. I mean, they are there, they are everywhere. So I talked to them and uh, to, to stop the, or to at least mitigate the, the travails of uh, taxation. Pagkabago kasi sinasabi ko lang, Andre, pagbigan mo ng panahon. Do not tax them to death at this early. Eh, eh, malulugi yan. Most of them, bananas. Hindi banana industry. Cacao. Pero, ko uh, dito sa teritoryo ko, sa Davao City, I can guarantee you, there will be no violence, even uh, if you do not pay. Sinasabi ko, lumang ninyong patayan yung tao just for money. Uh, Prangka-prangka mo rin ako doon sa NPA. But I know the lingo, the tokatis, because hang, galing ako sa baba. It was a long and winding road of sacrifice so that I really know ang problema sa baba. That's why I can talk to them. 
Pero uh, yung ano, yung mga business ventures, you let me know in advance so that I can talk to the NPAs. And maybe sabihin ko, give them a moratorium. Wala ka nang resibo dyan, ikaw pang apurado. <laughs> but I, 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 I take care of business sa Davao. And uh, I, I must know. Ang, ang rule talaga sa Davao, let me know kung ano ang problema mo. Kaya if I see yung mga kidnapper dyan, tapos sabihin ng polis, Sir, may nag-iikot-iikot dyan. Yung pa naman yung nag-kidnap sa Bulacan. Are you sure? No? Very sure. Oh, di di kidnapin mo. <laughs> Tabla-tabla lang. Tapos sabihin ng polis, Sir, nandito na sa amin. Sabi mo, di hingan mo na pera. Marami pera yan kasi marami kinila. Sir, wala raw. Eh, di ko patayin mo. <laughs> Maraming istorya. Dama si Dilima. May may marinig ang dilima yan. Wala na, Duter. You know, it is only in this country. You take an oath to, to, to tell the truth. Sa Congress, I was summoned to testify against Bangayan because of the rice smuggling. So I was, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. At one time, sabi ni Enrile, can you identify Bangayan? I said, yes, it's the one. Tapos tanong si ni Senator Enrile, Mayor Duterte, what will you do if you find Bangayan uh, smuggling rice? Sabi ko, I will gladly kill him. <laughs> maya, maya. <laughs> Itong si Jingoy, sabi ko, ano, 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 sabi ko, ano? Sabi ko, I'll give you an answer which you want to hear. Pag uwi ko doon sa hotel, nakahiga ako because I flew in overnight eh, kasi magtitaste pa sa umaga. Yung crawler ng, ay hindi pala, nakaganoon ako, sir. Ano ba ako lang, Kalagay doon, Duterte to be sued for uh, threatening. Well, not, uh, bakit mo ako i-threaten? Masina. You tell the truth? Yes. Anong gusto mo? Gusto kong patayin yan. Ay, bakit mo ako ngayon eh, kukulong na... Yes, my name is Terry Felix. I'm from HSBC. And my question is, Mayor, if let's say you get re um, elected into the presidency and you're successful at all, as everyone in the room uh, would seem to want, can you pick five people within the cabinet that you would want to remain in the same post for the next six years to continue their career? Ma'am, sa totoo niyan, sabihin ko na lang, mag-resign na ako bukas, inyo na yung gobyerno mo. Kaya kailangan. I mean, I, at this age, I said, uh, I have enough accolades in my life to make me happy. Kaya yung pinipikit ko yung mata ko, I think about the presidency, and uh, may halos pareho lang eh. Except that I, 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 I govern a, a bit of the territory in Mindanao. Para sa akin, okay na ako. Mga anak ko, tapos na. Nanununtok na nga yung gagang Inday na yun. Inday Sarah. Inday Sarah. Yes, please. Good afternoon. Uh, yes. Mayor, uh, I'm Rector Mercedes from the Business Bureau. No? It, is, uh, it has been said that the country has that unfortunate uh, fate not to elect the, the good president. No? And you appear to be one of the good ones. How do you propose to overcome the tendency to elect uh, only famous people, uh, like to say showbiz? No? Ang A, B, C, D, E, itong D lower pa uh, ang, ang, ang because of poverty and maybe the only luxury is really the shows, yung mga sine. And they identify themselves with the character that they see there. It's part of the psyche, the community psyche. Hindi mo talaga maano yan. Kasi kapag artista na, tatalon-talon na sila gano'n. It's uh, because of uh, lack of education. We cannot hope to bring this country to the next century if we cannot educate. If you cannot educate your children. That is why I said, if I become president, I propose to stop infrastructure projects. Complete those that are being done, but uh, no new. I will use the money for mitigation sa mga kapwa taon natin. Education really is very important. Yes, please. Uh, state your name. Good afternoon, Mayor. My name is Josephine Reyes, uh, Legal Broadcasting Corporation, the Radio. Sir, the, the recent um, schedule I have in Davao to visit our registration there, I asked our staff, if you run for president, will they vote for you? They said no. 
because they don't want you to leave them. And then, <laughs> if you do run for vice president, who will you run with? Or if you do consider presidency, who will be your vice president? Baba eh, talaga yan, ma'am. You know, actually, ganito yan eh. I, I, I think that what, uh, pardon me if I'm too presumptuous about it, but I think that most of you uh, came here just to listen and maybe to know whether I am in the, in, in the hustings already for, for the president. Sabi ko sa iyo, wala talaga. I am sorry, but talagang wala sa, ano, wala na sa, sabi ko nga, hindi ko na panahon. I never aspired for any national position. But he's still alive. After Alunan, gusto ni Presidente Ramos, ako yung DILJ. I said, sir, hindi ko type talaga yung national. Actually, I do not like Manila. Ano dito yan? Eh? Ang gulo, tapos traffic. <laughs> Then, uh, kay uh, uh, Erap, sabi niya minsan, uh, DILJ or sabi niya, ikaw na lang yung Customs School ka, Commissioner, kung na, Sos Mario Sef, sir. Uh, bigay mo yan sa iba, hindi ko type yung customs. Mamamatay ako dyan. Papa, sigurado, papatay ako talaga dyan. Then, uh, kay Ma'am Gloria, the last offer was uh, Secretary of Defense. Nandiyan si Colonel Esperon, uh, uh, General Esperon. Gusto ni President Arroyo ng I'll take over sa, from Roberto Gonzalez. Ayaw kasi ng mga military si Norberto. I don't know, but he's a good man. And itong Kampinoy, to the day that he took his out of office, there was really no secretary for uh, local governments. And I said, he will just hang on himself to the position. So at that time, uh, Ochoa was calling me if I could. The ALG said, I hope. Pres Vice President, wala uh, mga... Wala akong ganawa. Ako ang, ako ang vice president. I will cabal with uh, some military men. Patayin ko na yung presidente. Bakit pa ako maghintay na? <laughs> Six years in the waiting. Uh, hindi mo naman sigurado kung ikaw ang susunod. Yes, go ahead. Sir. Mayor, if indeed you're not running for president, what do you think of Vice President Binay, Senator Crespo, and uh, the ILG Secretary Maros. I think they are all presidential, but since they are later, they'll be proclaiming their candidacies for the top They are all good, good uh, uh, officials. They are in the national scene. They are all good. And of course, Binay has uh, a may burden lang sa dyan. Sa, sabi niya, false accusations. Well, let us see. Po naman can survive uh, the presidency by Getting the the best of the Filipinos, the best and the, yeah, the best and the brightest, all of them. Mar ganon rin. Kaya nga uh, sabi ko, I cannot endorse any one of them because they're all my friends. I I want them to to to, to smile to me when we meet in the future. Na walang sama ng loob sa yung. If I retire, kung magbalik yung anak ko. If you consider running again for mayor, I will retire from public life. I'm done. Because alam mo ganito yan eh. When I am spent politically and I grow old with so much uh, medical, medical issues, to whom shall I go for refuge? To the people in Walakanyan? And who would feed you? and buy your medicines. It's your family. Yan ang takbuhan mo at the end of the day, pamilya talaga. Kaya everywhere I go, sabi talaga nila na ano. And you know, when I say that I'll be running, I cannot. I will have a rebellion in my own backyard. So what am I supposed to do? Alam mo kasi, isa rin yan is, hindi pa ako, I have not tasted defeat in politics. I have a, in my, behind me, eight, eight elections. Mayor, Congressman, well, eh, mahirap na na maghanap ka pa at this age, maghanap ka pa ng disappointment. You know, I said, you will be, I will be old. But, can I, can, can I overcome the stress of defeat? Yeah, you want to retire, 
comfortable uh, mind and uh, eh kung makatikim ka ng talo mahirap yan sabihin lang na tao na eh si kato, eh, si ito, si ano kurap, itong ano, gano'n, gano'n, gano'n ay tabi so, so, so niya, eh, eh bakit kung bakit mo akong gawin excuse the but of the matter nila, kanila yun but do not make me an excuse just because they are not qualified in your by your standards. I am really very sorry, but I have to be very proud. I cannot go on with this uh, false pretense now. So that people will uh, see me and uh, maybe consider me as. I really do not need it. I'm sorry. I am Kasi na nilagay destiny. Destiny is God. O ngayon magilagay ako ni God dyan, sabi ko ako nang iiyak, si God talaga. <laughs> Sinabi ko sa iyo, God, eh. Give that destiny to others who need it, who badly needs it. So we have time for one last question. Uh, you have the microphone. Go ahead. Please state your name, sir. Hi, uh, Marco De Pablo from Jones Amazon. Good afternoon, Mayor. You have continued to dispel rumors of your possible residential bid. There's a saying that goes, the only way for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. If after the outcome of the Jones election, and the elected president fails to succeed in uplifting our country, would you have any regrets in not pursuing the president? No, I would not. Uh, I would just say, I'm saying I'm very sorry, but I could not make excuse of... Uh, you just look at the national scene. They're all here, and you can have uh, you know, your time to examine them, their competence. Oh, walk na lang ako, kasi madugok rin yan. Sinabi ko na sa inyo, hindi ako upo dyan. Nasabi ko, after six years, I did my best, but my best was bad, good enough. I would not waste six years. Kung ako maging presidente, after six years, there will be a new government, and there will be at least the standard. Eh, sipain mo talaga lang dyan. Ang delikado kasi sa akin, I might go extreme. If I cannot get the reforms six months to one year, I will be there for this one. Tapos yun. All in government are casuals. You hold it, uh, hang on there until you are advised to go. Tapos yun natin, I I'll have the last piece. You know, I, I, I am a Rodrigo doctor. I am a Filipino. I love the Philippines because it is the land of my birth. It is the home of my people. Tapos na ako, ginawa ko na ang kahit kaong ko sa dalawa. But uh, there was a price for that. You, it does not peace and uh, prosperity does not come easy. May bayad yan. At huwag muna ninyo akong tanongin unless you want me to go to Prisma. And if you want, you get the evidence from sources, not from the mouth. That would be bad. I mean, ako, I'm not, I'm no disciplinarian. Pero huwag mong gawain ang susunod mo. Ay, 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 hindi kita pa malusutin ang tanong. Especially criminals. Ito talag sa akin pa man. Leave the city. Because if you don't, maybe one day, you'll just have to Go might be a horizontal position for you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I apologize for the things that I have said. Uh, I hope you'd understand it. Ganon talaga ako. I ask for your forgiveness. Maraming salamat. Please give Mayor a big, big round of applause.